Hey, what is up mortals? It is Esper Kvie here with a new video for you. Welcome to part one of What If Deku Had a Regen Quirk? I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. There was a strong and persistent ringing in Izuka Midoriya's head. There were muffled voices around him, but the ringing drowned them out like his head was submerged in the water. His vision was filled with tears, but he didn't know why he was crying though it really wouldn't be a surprise. The world was too blurry to make out what was happening to him. He saw in faded shades as he looked up at the sky's blue, the blobs of green trees, and the pale, indistinguishable faces of people around him. His entire body felt numb. He felt the sensation of someone's soft hands on his face. The child knew it was unmistakably his mother's. He felt the rubber gloves of EMTs checking his pulse and securing him to a stretcher. He tried moving his body, his small legs attempting to break free from the restraints, one of his arms trying to grip onto the stretcher. His other arm was... Wait! The child stopped for a moment. Uh, left leg? Right leg? Left arm? Right? He couldn't feel his right arm. He blinked rapidly to clear up his tears as he tilted his head to the side. His right arm was purple and twisted in a way he'd never seen before. The shock of the sight was enough to have his memories flood back to him. He was in the forest with some other students in his kindergarten class when his courage was challenged by one of the kids, Katsuki Bakugo. The blonde kid had recently developed an explosion quirk and quickly became the leader in the class's social hierarchy because of it. Being one of the last students in his class to yet develop a quirk, Izuku was often easy pickings for being teased but he was determined to prove his worth to his classmates. Bakugo had challenged Izuku to climb one of the forest's tall trees to retrieve a ball that got stuck in between the branches. Izuku accepted the challenge, and, well, it did not end very well. What was surprising was the lack of pain Izuku felt after falling from such a significant height. The EMTs assumed that the boy's adrenaline was keeping him from feeling the pain, but other strange occurrences suggested that something else was at play. Once they arrived at the hospital, many of the small cuts that were scattered across his skin had mysteriously disappeared. The arm that was once a deep purple had changed gradients to a light pink, and the boy was able to wiggle his fingers again. After getting an x-ray of his arm done, one of the specialists suggested getting an extra x-ray of his feet as well. After a couple of minutes of suspenseful waiting, a doctor walked in with two photos. He sat down with a huff and looked at the pair with Viridian hair. Well, the man started, I have two photos here that suggest really good news. Great news, even. With a flare, the doctor slid the photos across the table to the mother and son, who stared at them, confused. Let's start with the x-ray of the kid's arm. When he first entered the emergency vehicle, his arm was broken in several places, but in this x-ray, he tapped on the photo for emphasis, it's only a simple hairline fracture. But what does this mean? Mrs. Midoriya asked, with a smile tugging on her lips as she attempted to not get her hopes up about the implications of this sudden healing. The doctor smiled and moved on to the other x-ray of Izuku's foot. Those with quirks are thought to be further along in human evolution since they are missing a toe joint in the pinky toe. Midoriya's eyes widened as the doctor continued. And if you look at the x-ray here, your son is missing said toe joint. The pair simultaneously started crying, as expected, as they hugged each other. The doctor, without missing a beat, said, Congratulations, kid. You got a regeneration quirk. Some years later, Bakugo and Midoriya laughed as they walked home, reminiscing about their youth. Not gonna lie, Izuku. When I saw you fall out of that tree, I dipped, Bakugo admitted. Of course you did, Kachan, Midoriya smiled. The shorter boy looked down at his forearms and turned them around, looking at the progress his training had brought him. He sighed and frowned a little, and then asked his friend, Do you think I could make it into UA with a quirk like mine? Bakugo's eyebrows furrowed as he hit Midoriya on the back of his head. Eh, what the hell are you on about? The pair paused underneath an underpass as Midoriya opened his mouth to answer, but stopped as he turned sharply around. Wait a second. Do you hear that? A deep rumbling grew louder and louder as the teens turned around to see a green slime explode out of the sewer. The slime with eyes, 
Said eyes quickly shifted between the blonde and the freckled boy until he smiled and rushed towards Midoriya. Oh, I know. <laughs> You'll make a nice skin suit. Don't make this difficult for me. Izuku's mouth and soon his organs were filled with a thick slime as he desperately clawed at the villain, only for his fingers to slide right through. But just as quickly as the villain started attacking Midoriya, Bakugo retaliated, shouting, DIE! as a loud explosion landed on the side of the villain. Quick and successive blasts from Bakugo slowed the slime villain's progress, as Midoriya helplessly clawed at the slime. There was only so much that Midoriya knew about how extensive his regeneration was. He knew he could heal a broken bone in a couple of minutes. He was numb to pain, and he'd never gotten sick before. The closest thing he had ever experienced to this was when he was learning how to swim and learned the hard way that his body still needs a good oxygen supply to stay conscious. This, however, was uh, significantly more uncomfortable and far more dire. But before Midoriya could continue to think about how he could get out of this, he heard a strong and familiar voice echo underneath the underpass. Texas Smash! A blast of wind pressure immediately removed the sludge villain from Midoriya's lungs, and he fell to his knees, gasping for air. Bakugo knelt to Midoriya's side, waiting for him to compose himself. After about a minute, the freckled boy's organs returned to their original state, and he sighed a breath of relief. Bakugo helped his friend stand up as they turned around to see their savior. The sight of Japan's number one hero, and their favorite hero, All Might, left them stunned. Izuku acted first, grabbing his dropped notebook from the ground and asking the hero to sign it, only to see he had already signed it. He was very fast. The boys stared at the autograph starstruck and were taken out of their shock when the hero announced that it was time for him to go. The teens thanked him one last time and watched as the hero jumped off into the sky. Midoriya looked down at his scarred and jagged hands, worn from years of testing his quirks abilities and physical training. He suddenly brought back to the sensation of the villain easily taking control of his body, with him being unable to fight back against it. He blinked away the tears that were shamefully forming and clenched his jaw. He felt a hand against his back and heard Bakugo say, Hey, you good? Midoriya pushed his feelings down and turned to his friend with a smile. Yeah, yeah, let's go home. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, make, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two, three, or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to binge shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming service with just the press of a button. Check out the link in the description to earn 72% off when buying for two years at $3.29 a month. This is a limited time deal. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. The following months were unrelenting for Midoriya. Not a day went by where he took a break, always finding a way to stay active and build muscle. Even Bakugo noticed the increased strain his friend was putting on himself, as his fighting style grew more offensively aggressive, replacing his usual calculating defenses. He no longer cared about defending his body, learning to overcome the natural reflex of flinching, as the concept of being hurt didn't really apply to him. Some of his fighting strategies could be seen as self-destructive and concerning to spectators. He would throw punches that would break his knuckles, then would focus his energy to regenerate them before throwing the next one. He never stopped to defend himself, always finding a way to counter or find an opening to strike. After carefully crafting his fighting style to overcome the weakness of a purely defensive quirk, he felt confident about his prospects of getting into his dream hero school, UA. The day of, however, his nerves still managed to creep up from the depth of his internal doubt, which he was trying to stifle. Midoriya readied himself and took his first step towards the doors of UA, only to find himself falling, because he was still subject to gravity. He reached out an arm to break his fall, but he found himself floating a literal arm's length away from the floor, somehow no longer subject to gravity. Whoa, that was close. Are you okay? Midoriya turned and saw a brunette looking back at him with a relieved smile. My name is Ochako Uraraka. Sorry for using my quirk on you. I saw you falling, and well, I kind of just reached out to save you. The girl brought both of her hands back together, and with a soft pink glow, Midoriya felt gravity return to him. Thank you. 
I, uh, I hope you do well on the entrance exam. The girl smiled a toothy grin back at him as she continued walking toward the entrance hall. Once again, Midoriya readied himself and took his second, and significantly more careful, step towards the doors of his dream school. After getting his information registered, Midoriya was relieved to find the familiar face of Bakugo amongst the crowd of potential first years. They settled into their assigned seats in the auditorium and engaged in a light conversation while waiting for the program to start. The sound of a microphone's feedback drew the students' attention to the front stage, where the voice hero, present Mike, stood. His explanation of the entrance exam was simple. After a handwritten test, the students would participate in a hero versus villains type of scenario against robot AIs. Each robot type was assigned to a point. Defeat the robot, and you gain its assigned point value, and gather as many points as you can. Easy enough, Midoriya thought. The written test was straightforward. Midoriya had never had serious issues with tests, and felt like his results would land probably above average. The real challenge was right in front of him. A single white line that he and the other students stood behind, separating them from a large false city training field. He tried to center himself, but found his eyes wandering around the students in his group. They'll all be fighting for placement in the hero course, and only 40 of them would make it in. As he surveyed the group, he saw the girl that helped him earlier. Something or Araka? He'd have to ask her later. Go, go, go! There's no countdown in a real battle! The loud voice of present Mike caught Midoriya off guard, but by the time he processed what was said, he was being left behind by the pack rushing into the city. Wasting no more time, Midoriya rushed down the city streets, already seeing several destroyed robots laying on the ground. He was about to turn a corner when a one-point robot skidded to a halt in front of him. Midoriya pulled his arm back and plunged his fist into the chest of the robot. The force easily dislocated his shoulder, but he gripped onto the wires he felt inside the robot and pulled them out. The robot fell onto its side with a hard thud as its glowing red eyes sputtered off. Midoriya focused his energy and felt a warmth rush from his core towards his injured shoulder. He tested his healing, moved his rotator cuff to ensure that it was back to normal, and continued his pursuit for more points. The robot's metal seemed to be sturdy yet semi-malleable under enough stress. Some robots took multiple strikes for their armor to be broken, but Midoriya would not falter. He would punch, kick, and headbutt as if his life depended on it. He would punch his knuckles bloody only to turn around to punch more foe villains with his newly healed hand. Several minutes had passed and Midoriya's endurance was starting to reach its limits. The repeated recovery of his body was draining, but he couldn't stop. He lost count of how many points he'd gathered, but he couldn't risk it not being enough. He couldn't risk feeling like all of his training wasn't enough. He didn't want to feel like he wasn't enough. But the ground was shaking. Midoriya looked around and saw several students running in unison in the same direction. No, they were running away from something. The ground shook again and a shadow loomed over him. The robot was easily towering over the height of the skyscrapers. It was the zero-point robot that present Mike explained in the auditorium. Midoriya had no time to stare at it. He had more pressing matters to attend to. Gathering more points. Help! Midoriya stopped in his tracks and looked behind him. The girl that helped him this morning. Her name was coming to a blank in his mind, but his body started moving towards her. She was trapped under rubble, and the zero-point robot was on a path to crush her. He kept gaining more momentum until his body reached its max velocity. He pushed and pushed until he reached her side. He quickly and desperately pushed the rubble off of her, cutting his hands against the rugged edges. The robot's foot was one step away from them. He only had a couple more seconds. He wished he was faster, stronger. He wished he had a quirk better suited for a hero. The robot's foot was right above them when the final piece of rubble was moved. He carried the girl in his arms, trying to get his legs to move faster despite the added weight he was carrying. He smiled despite himself. He actually saved her. He was able to get her away from the robot. All he had to do was turn the corner and move out of the robot's path and they'd be home free. He was falling. Everything he saw was moving painstakingly slow. He saw the girl's body fly forward out of his arms. He saw her eyes widen in horror as his chin crashed to the ground. He felt the rough bumps of the concrete's texture against his skin as his body slid against it. He saw a shadow looming over him. He tried to get up, but was knocked back down when the ground shook directly behind him. Time's up! The end of the practical exam came. But if that was the case, why were so many students still on the testing ground? Why were they gathering around him? Why were some of them crying? 
Flashing red and blue lights caused the crowd to disperse as an elderly lady approached him. She looked down at him with an unreadable expression. Midoriya then realized what happened and laughed. He took a big fall and was probably bleeding everywhere and had everyone concerned. They didn't know he had a regeneration quirk, he just had to show them that he was okay. Don't worry, I'm okay. See, my quirk's regeneration, so I'll be all healed up in an hour or so. <laughs> all the stares he was getting was making him nervous, though. His head has, had never felt this light, and he felt loopy. He used his scraped arms to push himself up, and then he bent his knee for support to get up. He fell straight back down. That's weird, Midoriya thought. He turned onto his back to see what happened, and his blood ran cold. Where his legs should be was the zero-pointer's foot. The world suddenly went dark, and Recovery Girl was probably going to beat the crap out of Nezu. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Our We the Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the Recruitment Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have a great day.